Once in a while, I'll find myself prototyping a process. The object I create is less about what I make and is more about how it's made. The process and the experience of learning while doing can be more valuable than the product it produces. This is why I built the steel tube deck chair. The challenge I gave to myself was to use a plasma cutter and a stock 4-inch steel tube to develop a reasonably attractive and functional chair. The simple geometry of the tube would dictate what could and could not be done. As soon as I had a digital model of the chair, it was only a matter of finding a creative way of transferring that information to the steel tube. Once I understood the plasma curve, I could laser cut the patterns out of eighth inch Baltic birch plywood. The live hinge would allow me to wrap the geometry around the corner of the steel tube. I discovered pretty quickly that I would need to embed magnets into the patterns to keep them in place. If I had known about this beforehand, I could have simply laser cut the holes, but it's easy enough to add them with a Forstner bit. Fender washers keep the magnets from pulling through the pattern. Here I'm marking the fillet of the tube to make it more visible. A quick mist of water would help to preserve the pattern and to protect it from burning. Now it should be as easy as following the patterns. Miller Electric has provided me with this Spectrum 625 Extreme Plasma Cutter used in this video. Please check out the description for more information. With a minimal amount of effort, the rough cuts of the plasma could be smoothed out. I am transferring the layout from the computer to the welding table. The parts themselves will dictate how they go together, but it is helpful to have a guide. I designed the chair to be planar on the outside face. This means it could be welded on a flat table. Once the parts are fitted, seams can be relieved for welding the joints. I will tack everything in place and weld the seams once it fits perfectly.
After I had one side complete, I simply clamped the opposite side on to ensure a symmetrical layout. These magnetic tabs make positioning easy. With the mirrored sides complete, the cross members could be placed and welded at the front and top of the chair. The middle cross member would have to wait until the layup of the cedar seat and seat back was complete. I made sure that these cross members were square. All of the seams were filed and sanded smooth. Once the steel frame was together, I could now focus on the wooden seat of the chair. I have always wanted to play around with laminated wood, and this was an excellent opportunity. Rather than do separate layups for the seat and seat back, I chose to combine them into a single laminated strip. This simplifies the entire operation and the parts would just be yielded from a longer curvy stick. I developed form geometry in order to laminate the wood strips with epoxy. Here I am using a quarter inch compression spiral bit. This would all be cut out on a CNC. The ability to do multiple layups at once will greatly speed up this process. I embedded geometry that allows me to clamp directly across the layup. The three quarter inch Baltic birch was glued up to produce formwork that is inch and a half thick. I use clear packing tape to keep the epoxy from sticking to the forms. These forms were eventually 100% covered with packing tape. For the cedar strips, I am using 5 quarter cedar deck boards. These are 10 foot boards that will be cut in half, as this is a much more manageable length for passing through the table saw. The combination of the seat and seat back add up to a bit less than 60 inches. The boards are sliced into eighth inch strips and will be later distributed randomly into piles of six. I paid special attention to varying the grain as much as possible. Six laminations will get me to a three quarter inch thickness and should provide excellent strength.
The strips without knots or blemishes will be marked and added to the inside and outside of the laminations. I am laying out all of the strips flat in order to more effectively apply the thickened epoxy. This epoxy is thickened with microfibers to improve the glue up and to fill any gaps between the laminations. Check out the description for more information on what I used. Here you can see how effective the clamps were at targeting the different areas of the glue up. This was left for 24 hours and then was able to be removed from the forms. You can see how important the packing tape was for easy removal. Once all the slats have been glued up, I can sand off the excess epoxy and clean up the edges. You could do this all with a palm sander, but the thickness planer made quick work of it. These strips can now be cut in half to separate the seat and seat back geometry. There's approximately three inches of extra length at the ends and between the parts. After the parts are separated, I used a jig to draw an accurate line. But then I still left a little extra just in case. Next, I needed to make the spacers that would go between the slats of the chair. These would receive a dowel through the width of the seat and serve to accurately locate the strips and spacers. This drilling jig ensures that the holes will be consistent across both the strips and the spacers. This will aid tremendously in the glue up. For the glue up, I decided to use Type Bond 3. The slightly longer set times and water resistant qualities were welcome during this step. The spacers are about a sixteenth inch thicker than the slats. Later, they'll simply be sanded flush. The dowels were cut off and sanded flush. In order to ensure an even and consistent finish, I'm using Total Boat Penetrating Epoxy. This is an extremely watery liquid and will soak in over multiple days and add extra durability to the surface of the wood.
The final step is total boat gleam. The epoxy does not protect the wood from UV light, so the spar varnish will act like sunscreen to protect the wood. With the seat complete, I just added some aluminum spacers before the final assembly. By using a guide block and pilot drill, I transferred the holes through the chair into the angle that would receive the wood. In order to have the chair not have any visible fasteners, I would need to weld some studs onto the frame. The frame is tapped to ensure the stud is perpendicular. Then the hole is countersunk and the stud can be welded on the face and ground flush. With the final geometry of the wooden seat known, I will place the rear cross member using some extra slats. I decided that I wanted to make the frame black, but I felt like paint was a bit too obvious. I decided on tool blacking instead. I could have used cold process chemical blacking that works okay, but instead I chose to do some old timey hot blackening with boiled linseed oil. The process isn't too different from seasoning a new cast iron pan. You raise the temperature of the steel until it turns blue, apply linseed oil, and then continue applying heat until it turns black. I used steel wool for applying the oil and did a couple coats to get a nice even finish. While the steel was still warm, I finished it with paste wax and buffed it out. All that was left at this point was the final assembly. This was an extremely rewarding project, and I learned a lot about processes that I had not yet tried. The geometry of the chair is very satisfying to look at and sit in. I am happy to know that I have this geometry in the computer if I ever want to do another one or to tweak it into a slightly different design. 
as I know the resulting chair will complement bodies of all sizes. Thanks for watching.